Sin Zhao, and welcome back to North Vietnam for some more Strike Fighters 2 flying MiG 21 F 13s with the 2nd Flight 921st Sao Zhou Fighter Regiment out of Kep Air Base in North Vietnam. Today's date is April 24th, 1966. I've switched us to a three week rotation for the missions, so it'll still be, for the most part, uh, once a month. And then every, I guess, uh, four months we'll have an extra one within within the same month, if my math is right on that. There's been a lot happening in April of 66, beginning on the 1st, which was actually the, the date of our last mission. That was when Rolling Thunder began to target the railroad and highway infrastructure of North Vietnam with a serious interdiction effort. So that's been uh, going on this whole month. And then, on April 8th, Hanoi was finally targeted with serious efforts for the first time. That's when Rolling Thunder started striking at power plants and industrial centers in the heart of the city. However, mostly with little effect. And finally, three days from now, on the 27th, General Westmoreland, the commander of U.S. forces in Vietnam, personally told President Johnson that he would be dismayed at the prospect of halting Rolling Thunder. At this point, Rolling Thunder was already uh, being debated hotly back home by people who doubted its effectiveness, and they were in opposition to another faction that believed that Rolling Thunder was being successful. So, you know, the, that strife back home continues to our benefit here in North Vietnam. Our mission objective today is going to be to intercept an enemy flight approaching Dong Phong Tong, which is actually an area down by the coastal city of Tan Hoa, so we'll be heading down there today. Call sign is the Van Phu flight. We'll be taking eight MiG-21 F-13 fishbed Cs. I'm going to take two whole flights of aircraft this time. I'm going to try to use the second flight to fend off any enemy escorts to give us a clear shot right at the strike aircraft. So we'll see how that works out. Sort of a late mission today. Takeoff time of 17.10, that's 5.10 in the afternoon. Down over the target by 17.24, landing back at cap at 17.39. Let's check out our armament. I'm back in aircraft 2040, same as last time. Uh, same VPAF Silver 1. I'm, I don't have a rank high enough to be able to change any of that just yet. And as I said last time, loaded with two AA2s and a 490 liter drop tank on the center line. Total takeoff weight 17,220 pounds. And that is the same for all eight aircraft in the flight. On the map, we'll be taking off from Kep. We're going to have to make a big circle to come around to get everybody up off the ground. We have eight aircraft to get into formation today. So we'll make a big circle and then head down to the southwest, crossing over the Ma River to Waypoint 3, which will be just at the foothills of the, uh, the mountains here out to the west. Once we hit that, we're circling around, heading towards the initial point, which is right over downtown Tan Hoa, and then slightly out to sea, uh, for the intercept point, which is a little bit of a dangerous proposition. In real life, we would be in danger of being shot at by uh, Red Crown, the, the picket ships, the radar ships that were on station out in the Gulf of Tonkin, or maybe even ships from uh, Yankee Station itself, although they'd be a little far away to do it. But definitely U.S. ships patrolling nearby in the area shot down several MiGs, I think at least, at least two, maybe a couple more, uh, with surface-to-air missiles. So, out over the ocean is not really a place that we want to be as MiGs, but, uh, you know, that's not too far. That's just, we're going to pop out and then turn around and chase them back into Tan Hoa. So, you know, if we're going to shoot them down before they get to the target, we're going to have to go out over the Gulf. So, we'll probably be all right. So, last mission, we stayed at high altitude, and we were able to dive in behind the strike force. This time, we're going to try a different tactic, one which was adopted by the MiGs, the MiG-21 specifically, as the war progressed, and that's going to be to stay at low level, to stay off the American radar, circling around behind the strike flight, and then pulling up into firing position. So that's going to be our, our attempt this time. We're going to see how that works, and if, uh, you know, if we find that one is any better than the other in any particular way, or if it just depends on the day, which I kind of think is the case. <laughs> Anyways, after the shoot 'em up at Tan Hoa, hopefully we can down some bad guys. Uh, not get shot ourselves. We're going to egress to the north, back up to Kep, and uh, we're a little bit farther away this time, so keeping an eye on the fuel will be important so we don't suck the tanks dry and turn the MiG-21 into a lawn dart. A couple of interesting developments. 
with the deployment of friendly squadrons. You can see here that uh, the first flight of the 923rd Yen Te Fighter Regiment has moved down to Gai Lam, which is just east of Hanoi. It's in the little crook between Hanoi and the, uh, the river there. Uh, so they've relocated to that airport, and fourth flight of the 921st has moved their MiG-17Fs to Wallach Airfield. So for the first time, the, the squadrons are spreading out to uh, some of the new air bases, and I think, this is just off the top of my head, but I think that's because their construction was complete. Fukien and Kep were the only jet-capable airfields in the country for a long time, and I think what's happening now is these other airfields, their construction is finally finishing, they've been enlarged, so the squadron started to get dispersed out to some of the other airfields so they weren't all concentrated in the same place. And finally, our roster today, quite full, but we're just going to touch on the, uh, the primary ones. So, my wingman in Van Fu 2, Second Lieutenant Dang Nyok Chu, who was our number four last time, if you remember, he got two air-to-air -air kills on his first mission out, so he is going to be my direct wingman this time. Uh, leader of the second element in uh, Van Fu 3 is Second Lieutenant Tran Nyok Chow, and my number four is Second Lieutenant Duong Van Vai. And leading the second flight in 2-1 is going to be the squadron CEO, Lieutenant Colonel Pham Hong Nyo. Okie dokie smokey, that covers just about everything, so like I said, this is going to be sort of a late afternoon run, so uh, the light is not going to be in our favor. Let's get out there and do some damage while we can still see where we're going. <laughs> Van Fu flight cleared for departure runway 12 out of KEP, so brakes disengaged. Pushing the throttle up on the R11, we are rolling. Full power. Afterburner lights off, giving us a little kick in the ass, and we're screaming down the runway. Nose is starting to lift on its own just a little bit as we pass 200 kph. There's 300 rotation speed. Pull back ever so gently. And we lift off the runway. Gear up. Flaps up. Banking over to the north as we pass the GCI station just off the end of the runway. Not going to do a full circle this time. We're just going to head north, climb up to altitude, and then turn around and come back, and then we should intercept the rest of the flight, uh, get everyone together, and then we'll head down to the down to the southwest. There we go. Two's airborne already. So a small correction from the panel description from the last episode, down in the bottom left there, that gauge that's just above the gear lever, I thought it had to do with the automatic control of the nose cone because it did respond to the, the varying speed of the aircraft, but it's actually not that at all. That's for the ARU-3V, which is way beyond the scope of this game, but basically it's an automatic stability system that was installed in the MiG-21, and I, I think was designed for the MiG-19 and uh, somebody will correct me on that, but it has to do with the ratio of control input versus control surface movement, and that's also dependent on the speed of the plane, so that's why we'll see that gauge go up and down uh, throughout missions. That's what it's doing, really down in the weeds on that, not something that we need to really know or worry about in this particular game, but uh, I, f I would feel remiss if I didn't <laughs> mention that to the people that do know what it is. They'll be pleased now that I at least made that correction. There goes Lieutenant Colonel Pham, that is the leader of the second flight, just lifting off the runway, full afterburner. There he goes, he's airborne. So, uh, with the second flight now making its takeoff runs, it's time to turn back around and head down towards waypoint three and we'll pick up the last four aircraft as we go. I'm also going to climb up to altitude for the cruise, at least for a little while, save a little bit of fuel. Obviously we have a, a, a ceiling above us today, so I'm not going to go up into the clouds, because this is not an all-weather fighter. We're a 
<laughs> we're a clear weather day fighter only, and the sun is setting, and we have an overcast. So, <laughs> you know, so the last thing we want to do is is head up into the clouds at the moment. But we'll skim just underneath it until we get close down to waypoint three. Then we'll drop down and start following the train and uh, try to avoid the Americans. Today we talk about something that has been part of all military aviation since its very beginning, and that is the concept of the flying ace. An ace is considered a skilled pilot, most often associated with shooting down five or more aircraft. World War I, II, and the Korean War produced many aces, but with the march of technology and the types of wars being fought in modern times, it's much more of a rare distinction. In the Vietnam War, North Vietnam produced 17 aces, led by Win Van Kok with 9 kills, while due to pilot rotations, the U.S. only produced 5. Despite this downturn over time, most people are still generally aware of what an ace pilot is, and we use the word ace in daily life to describe people who excel in their fields. But where exactly did this term come from? Was it in use already, and was applied to pilots? Or did it start with pilots and come into use elsewhere? And why is five considered the magic number? The word ace dates all the way back to the Romans. The Latin word asa meant one, or a unit. The asa was also the name of a Roman coin introduced in 280 BC. The bronze coin weighed one pound, and became the base unit for all Roman, Republican, and later Imperial coinage. It's possible that the Latin asa may have been taken from the even older Greek heis, also meaning one. By the 12th century, Asa was still in use in Old French, thanks to gambling dice, also inherited from the Romans. The Asa was the side of the die with only one mark. The French Asa mutated into Ace in English around the year 1300, still referring to the one on dice. Because an Ace was the lowest roll on a die, the word came to be used to mean bad luck or something of no value in Middle English during the late medieval period. During the 1500s, card playing began to overtake dice in popularity, and the ace now began to refer to the card with the single pip. Through the next several hundred years, European card games changed as they were influenced by Chinese and Middle Eastern card games, which often had rules that scored the lower cards higher. The ace slowly worked its way from the lowest card in the deck to being the highest, this modern convention of ace high finally took shape in the 1700s, and the term ace changed its everyday meaning from bad luck to excellence or high quality. The use of the word ace to describe pilots comes from French newspapers in World War I, beginning in 1915. The term las, or the ace, had already been used by French sporting publications for years before the war. An ace described an excellent athlete as one at the top of the deck in their sport. When French pilot Adolphe Pigot shot down his fifth German plane in 1915, French newspapers called him an ace as well. The number five was completely arbitrary, but Pigot was already famous because of his pre-war aerobatics, and now the French papers were eager to report his exploits as war propaganda. At that time, trench warfare had already ground to a stalemate, and France and Britain were taking more casualties than Germany. Some good news was badly needed to raise morale. Although the French made first use of the word ace, it was not adopted immediately, nor was there agreement on the number of kills necessary. In Great Britain, ace pilots were called star turns, originally a theater term but also used in sports. However, this was from press coverage of pilots only. The British government felt that it was detrimental to morale to single out fighter pilots when there were equally brave bomber and reconnaissance pilots. A lack of an official system, as well as problems with confirming kills that were mostly behind German lines, made the recognition of British aces very informal and inconsistent. Pilot Arthur Gould Lee, even after five kills, described himself in a letter as being miles from ace status. 
Germany, like France, took advantage of the propaganda benefits and had a strict system in place for documenting victories and recognizing ace pilots. After Max Immelmann was awarded Germany's highest medal, the Poil le Merite, at eight victories, that became the number German pilots strove for to become an ace. The requirement to be awarded the medal was later raised to 16 in 1917, and by the end of the war it was up to 30 victories. When American forces appeared in Europe in 1918, American newspapermen covering the war decided to settle on the French number of five kills to make an ace. After the conclusion of World War I, there was enough agreement in the aviation community to make five the magic number. Ace status began as a propaganda term with an arbitrary number, and largely remains so today. Different countries may have higher requirements to award specific medals, but it's generally agreed and accepted worldwide that five aerial kills earns a pilot the right to be considered an ace. Van Foo Flight is just over the foothills now of the Western Mountains, heading towards Waypoint 3, just a few miles away. You saw that I changed the formation on Flight 2. I put them into a trail formation and also spread them out a little bit further behind us. And we have lots of activity out to our left. F4 is coming in off the ocean, and it looks like they are actively looking for us already. So, you know, we have to be on guard even this far out, I think, because they are looking for us. Luckily, these mountains, these hills here will, uh, will help shield us. We can see three and four high in formation up to my left. And there's waypoint three, so we'll make a nice gentle turn out to the east, head towards Tan Hua and our initial point. Second Lieutenant Dang just out there to my left, holding formation through the turn. And we're going to skim right over the top of these hills here. There we go, on course. And as we move away from the foothills, we're going to drop some altitude to stay nice and low. Primary targets 1 o'clock at 50 miles still, so pretty far out, as are the nearest targets. Escort F4s, they're still way out over the ocean. But like I said, it looks like they are separated, it looks like they're not in formation, which means they're actively searching for targets or boring in on the targets. Now we do have another MiG-21 uh, squadron, a friendly, out of Fukien, who is also in the area. And it looks like they see them, we just, uh, they have visual contact with those MiGs, so, shit, so they might be out over the ocean at this point. That's a good sign, though, if we have the Fukien MiG-21s and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Pham's MiG-21s. Hopefully all that will keep the F-4s busy and we can sneak around and underneath them and find the strike aircraft, whatever they are. Coming up on the Ma River here, and I can just see the edge of the city of Tanwa coming into view just off to the left there. Let's see how close these F-4s are. They're 25 miles out now, so 
Flight 2, Lieutenant Colonel Pham, attack my target. There they go, Flight 2 breaking off. They've dumped their tanks, all four aircraft in trail formation. They're pulling up and to the left, and uh, they're going to go head-to-head -head with those F-4s, hopefully keeping them busy. Flight 1, we're going to advance to full power, full military power. Not afterburners just yet. And the primaries are at 1 o'clock. So let's... Let's cut down to the right and try to zoom behind them. My wingmen are still in position. Let's get right down on the deck here and head towards the mouth of the river. Get around behind these guys. There's Dang out to the left. Okay, primaries are now at 9 o'clock, so directly to my left at 25 miles there, 5,000 feet. Right over the River Ma. Right at the, the mouth of the river. We're coming up on the coastline. Friendlies are getting radar pings from the F-4, so that's probably, hopefully, the second flight. Okay, they're still out to my left. Let's start making a nice, gentle turn out to sea. Skimming right over the coastline. Van Fu is feet wet. Not something that we say very often. But we are now out over the gulf. Hopefully if we keep this low altitude we can avoid enemy SAMs from those destroyers. Or <laughs> enemy missiles from the F-4s and somebody is under attack. Oh no, and we've lost a wingman. Primary is 12 o'clock, they're at 20 miles now. Nearest bandit is 10 o'clock at 7 miles. Oh shit, this is an F-4. Fuck, I think our little ruse has failed. Because it looks like they're closing on us. Flight 2, attack this target. Full power on the R-11. If we can at least maintain the distance from those F-4s. Maybe if they're chasing us, Flight 2 can get behind them for a kill. Jesus, they're only three miles from us. Flight 2. Reiterate, attack this target. Yes! Somebody's fired an AA-2. Alright, primary target's now moving to my left. Oh, more missiles coming at my guys. Primary is now 10 o'clock. Okay. Another wingman damaged. It's not my guys, though. There's three and four directly up above me. Alright, they're only seven miles out now. They're A4 Skyhawks. Van Fu 3, attack my target. Second element moving in on the target. Once we get closer, we'll designate a second target and uh, we'll tell the wingman to attack that and then we'll pick a third one and go after it ourselves. No interference from those F-4s at the moment. I think that uh, the second flight is distracting them, which is their job. Van Fu 2 attack my target. Alright, we don't need the HUD on for targeting anymore, so we're going to pick another... A4 and move in. There's a MiG-21 at 12 o'clock high. There they are. I can see the targets. They're dead ahead. They're up in the sky above me. I have the AA-2 selected. There we go. We have a growl. 
a tall away. It's tracking. And a second one. It's also tracking. Switching to guns. Damn, both targets outmaneuvered the missiles. They worked this time. They just couldn't stay with the A4s. Look at this. The whole A4 squadron is breaking up. This is new and unusual. Usually they just keep boiling straight ahead. Now they're maneuvering. Whoa, two A4s crossing between me and the target as I'm firing. Jeez, I couldn't see him. I couldn't see him in the darkness. Breaking off the attack will get reset up and make another gun attack. For the first time, the strike aircraft are actually maneuvering to get away from us, and that has not been the case. There we go, we've got a hit. Something is going down. Look at that big flaming fireball out over the ocean. Looks really pretty in the fading light. Alright, continuing to circle around. Finding that target very hard to see in the overcast and the dim light. There he is, 12 o'clock right on the nose. And he is still maneuvering, he's still circling. The target is to the right, so he's definitely not heading in. He's, he's actually cutting. I don't know if they've dropped their bombs or if they're maneuvering with them on board, but... Let's high yo-yo up over this guy. Oh man, we're gaining on him a little fast. Air brakes are out. Nope, now we're bleeding off too much speed, so they're back in. Something cutting in behind me. No, wait, that was a friendly shooting at something behind me. Jesus Christ, do I have a do I have a guy on my tail? Okay, this A4 scissoring back in. Ah, fuck you. Guys calling bingo fuel. Scissoring back around. Where the fuck is th Okay, there he is. Oh, jeez. This is not a great speed mismatch. He is He's able to maneuver actually quite well at this low speed, and it's a little slow for us. I'm, I'm wallowing the aircraft. There we go. Now he's going out straight. Cutting back into the right. He is just zigzagging all over the sky. If he can just go straight for a second, we could maybe get a beat on him. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Shit. Oh, Fuck, I lost him in the darkness and we caught up to him too fast. Alright, hi yo yo again, up over the top. There he is. Okay, I've got eyeballs on him. He is in this left turn. If he just stays nice and gentle. Got the red light on. We have a radar lock with our range-finding radar. Oh, man, this is looking good. Stay right there, you motherfucker. <laughs> yes. And confirmed this time. He is going down. Speaking of going down, let's get the fuck out of here. Time to bug out. Everybody's bingo fuel diving down for the deck. Let's head back north and egress. I probably don't have any ammo left. And if I do, it's not. It's probably, you know, two rounds. In fact, let's just shut the radar right off. Because we don't need it anymore. And I don't need it to be showing up on enemy uh, raw equipment in case they have them installed. I guess it's a little early for raw, but fuck it. Better safe than sorry. So radar is secured. Skimming the trees, heading back up north to Kep. And I'm not going to order the wingmen to separate, just in case they're still engaged. Which two still is. Look at that. Two just fired his second missile. He is now out of missiles, but he's obviously tangling with somebody, so... 
What I will do is I'll tell uh, Flight 1 to get into a trail formation. So, as they do disengage, they'll end up in front of me. Up over the top of this little hill. And I think we're over named in. Ooh, we're down under 500 liters in the fuel tanks. You can see the red light on, and we're in the red arc on the uh, the fuel totalizer, the fuel gauge. Oh, another wingman! Taken out! Son of a bitch. Actually, where the hell are we? Oh, I think this is Ninbin. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, primary target A4s are still loaded with bombs, so even though they were maneuvering, they apparently didn't dump their stores, which is interesting. Yeah, you can see there we've got the... Well, that's interesting, right? That that light actually says 450, but should be for 500 liters. Uh, Ninbin is at our 6 o'clock. Namdin out to our right, and Fu Lai coming up on the left. Two wingmen behind me. Looks like four is going down. And two? What the hell is Van Fu 2 doing? Look, he's way out in the middle of nowhere and he won't disengage because he says he's padlocked. He is chasing Americans. <laughs> what, all the way back out to Yankee Station? What are you doing, guy? There we go. He's got a f an F4 in his sights. But he is alone out here. This is... This was not a great tactical decision on his part. Maybe the GCI can send him some help. Oh, man. Shit. So he's out of missiles, but I assume he must still have guns. Well, best of luck to you, Second Lieutenant Dang. What's our situation? Okay, our nearest bad guy is 50 miles away, so I'm going to pull back up to altitude. And we'll pull back the throttle to uh, conserve some of this gas. As we head back up to Kip. There's Fulai out to the left. There's the mouth of the Red River with Namdin out behind us to the right. Oop, two is firing guns. Uh, apparently to no effect, unfortunately. I don't have a good feeling about our number two out there. Once he disengages and heads back to Kep, back towards North Vietnam, you know, hopefully the Americans don't decide they're going to run him down, but that is a distinct possibility. The fuck? Fireball out to the left. That's... GCI told us the nearest bad guy was behind us at 50 miles. What the hell? Let's try that again. Nearest bad guy, 4 o'clock at 50 miles. Is it? There's apparently combat just out to my left, so what the fuck? Well, maybe that was the last guy. No, look at that! Flak is firing! There's, a, there's an American right out there to the left. Apparently not showing up on North Vietnamese radar. Because we have visual confirmation of a bad guy right there, and they're telling me the nearest bad guys are up to my right at 50 miles. That's very interesting to take note. Two's out of ammo. Okay, so he should be heading home now. As we're just off to the east of Hanoi, we're coming up. We should be rolling right over Gaia Lam Airfield here in just a moment. That's Wallach out to the left, by the way. Back gang coming up on my right. Oh yeah, there's the, uh, there's Gaia Lam Airfield. If we had stayed with the first flight of the 923rd, that's where we would be stationed right now. Okay, lights on as we begin our descent. We are in contact with the approach radio, and now we're contacting the tower, so... Taking a look, there is the Kep Airfield. I have visual. We're going to roll down and uh, just turn in to make our overflight on runway 12. And 
No wingmen are near me, but we've got something ahead of me. The, what is that? The Van Bay flight. It's just out ahead of me somewhere. That, oh, there it is. There it is. Look at that. Navigation lights on. Uh, I'm betting that's that AN-2 that we saw flying around earlier. Yep. A little Antonov flying around. Okay, we're rolling out on runway 12. Somebody has a missile inbound, and I suspect it's number 2. Oh, and it's... He's down. Son of a bitch. I'd bet money that that was Dang out over the ocean. Right over kept now, very dark. Lights on. In the break. Less than 450 knots, so gear coming out. And flaps. And we're going to hold off with the air brakes just for the moment. Maintaining 350 kph in the pattern. Oop, more nav lights out at 11 o'clock. Just even with the threshold, so beginning our turn to final. We'll bring the air brakes out, we'll nudge the throttle up. See if we can make a little bit smoother landing than, uh, than last time. Have to watch that descent rate. We're just above 300 kph. Which might be a little slow, honestly. We slammed down pretty hard at, at this speed last time, so... Right in over the threshold. Nudging the nose up. Oh, and we're a little hot. As we're just floating down the runway. Come on, settle down. Pulling up right at 10 degrees. No more than this. And we touch down. bring the flaps up and we'll let the airplane roll out. Uh, a unique feature, at least at the time, that the MiG-21 had was actually a three-wheel braking system, which is what the red round lever out to the left on the instrument panel is actually for. That controls the nose wheel braking. Um, again, something that I just sort of glossed over in the previous episode because it's not something that really pertains to us, but in real life it was one of the things that allowed the MiG-21 to have shorter landing runs that in combination with or instead of the drag chute, but uh, it's not good for taxiing, so you got to turn it off while taxiing. And we are clear of runway 12. So let's hold it up here, and I'll open the canopy. Uh, wingmen are nowhere near us. They are scattered all over North Vietnam this time. So we're going to head back to the debriefing. And uh, before we do, we'll just check in on them on the map and make sure that, uh, that they are on their way back. Okay, welcome to the debriefing. Some very interesting developments. If you took that bet I made while I was in the landing pattern, then I owe you a Coke. Or, you know, whatever. Because uh, all three of my wingmen made it back. It was actually the second flight 
that took all of the casualties, and we'll get to that in a second, but I am shocked at that. So let's take a look at this here. We are to intercept an enemy flight approaching Dong Fong Tong, prevent the enemy flight from reaching its target, which we did not do. Flight time, 38 minutes and 33 seconds. Result, three primary targets were destroyed, so we did do damage. Unfortunately, that was at a loss of four aircraft. So over two missions, we still don't have a favorable kill ratio. Uh, we shot down three of the A4s, but we lost the four MiG-21s for a rating of failure. Score of 350. Now, I I doth protest this a little bit because uh, if this were real life, those A4s all broke and started maneuvering. They would have dumped their bombs, which would have prevented them from bombing. So I just want to enter for the record that they should have been deterred from bombing, but... Of course, this isn't real life. This is a game, and they were able to still put bombs on the target. So we lose this time out. Here is our stats. <laughs> I fired 28 out of 30 rounds, which I offhandedly said, oh, I probably have two rounds left. Holy shit, I was right. Fired both missiles, uh, neither one of which hit. However, this was not the fault of the missiles this time, because they actually both tracked, and interestingly enough, they tracked on two different targets. But, unfortunately, they were just outmaneuvered and didn't end up hitting. We got the one kill with the guns. Now, 2nd Lieutenant Dang fired all of his armaments for no hits. Chow didn't fire at all. But 2nd Lieutenant Duong Vai, he got a gun kill uh, after firing both of his missiles as well. Neither one doing any damage. So he was able to shoot something down with the gun, which leaves us with, uh, where was the third kill? Interesting. We have a we have a mystery kill. Somebody got a third A4 kill somehow. My only guess is that it was a ground fire, it was a flak hit, or maybe one of the Fukien MiG-21s took him down. That ma that actually makes our kill ratio even worse. So in the second flight, nobody fired any weapons except for this Lieutenant Chow, who was number four. He fired one missile. All four of those pilots at the bottom got shot down. Uh, the entire second flight, they were the ones getting getting blown out of the sky. Okay, over on the roster now, and this makes today's mission even more amazing. For losing four MiG-21s to missile fire, no less, we have only one KIA. That was Lieutenant Win Hong Sang. He was killed, and Captain Lam Nyong Lak was wounded, so he survived. I believe he was in the number two position, and our our squadron CO, Lieutenant Colonel Pham, he ejected with no problem. He is still active. And Lieutenant Win Tang Chow, who was in the number three position, he is active as well. So he was not wounded or killed either during the shootdown. So that is really amazing that these missile kills are not actually killing my guys. Apparently they're a little more survivable than I believed. So, right out of the gate, 1728, this would have been directly over the city of Tan Hua. F-4B fired a sidewinder at Lieutenant Colonel Pham, hitting him and shooting him down near Ham Rong. So, so there we go. We lost the, the squadron commander. He was the first casualty. Uh, he was able to eject and uh, parachute to safety and was returned to the base by truck. So, I wonder if maybe instead of a direct hit, these sidewinders or these American missiles are air bursting and uh, just doing you know, splash damage to our to our aircraft. 1729, Lieutenant Chow fired an Atoll at an F-4 Phantom. So that was the one missile that they fired, which missed, unfortunately. Within that same minute, so just seconds later, we lost another MiG-21 to a Sidewinder, shot down near Hamrong. And then we have a whole list of Sidewinders being shot at our guys. 1731, on the dot, interestingly enough. I fired my first AA-2 at a Skyhawk, firing the second one two seconds later at a separate target. Duong Vai firing uh, his two missiles at a different set of Skyhawks, also within seconds after that. At 17.31 and 39 seconds, Duong Vai fired his 30mm cannon at that Skyhawk, hitting and destroying it. So that was the one that we saw burning off to the upper left as we were coming around. After a ton of American Sparrows flying through the air, I finally circled back in on that A4 after 
kind of a tough fight. I was not expecting that uh, at all. That A4 Skyhawk, super nimble little aircraft. And uh, not operating in the same flight envelope as our very fast MiG-21. But at 1734, I was able to hit him with the 30 millimeter and destroyed him. Chow was hit by a Sidewinder shot down near the Dian Chow radar station. And Captain Locke was hit by a Sidewinder near the back long radar station, wounding him, but he was able to get out of the aircraft. So he is still with us, just a little banged up. And that was the hit that we heard over the radio while I was trying to land. That's I thought that that was my number two getting hit, and it was actually the number two of the second flight. So he almost made it back. He was the sole survivor of the second flight at that point, and somebody caught him somewhere, maybe trying to get back to base and shot him down. So there we have it. Sort of just a bizarre flight all around. Uh, crazy dogfight in the gloom. Very, very dark. You know, it didn't start off so bad, but man, it got dark a lot faster than I sort of realized that it was going to. Um, super shitty AA2 performance this time out again. I did look up something that I sort of remembered reading, and it was in my Clashes book by Marshall Michelle. U.S. intelligence calculated that the AA-2s had a 13% hit rate over the course of Vietnam, which is right around what Sidewinders was at the same time. The only caveat to that is that was only based on the number of atolls observed as being fired at us. Uh, so it seems likely that there was probably many more that were fired that were unobserved, and so that percentage is actually probably lower. But as for the observed firings... The Atoll was basically just as shitty as the <laughs> early Sidewinder was, and clearly demonstrated here again in this mission. Although, like I said, that was not for want of the electronics failing. They actually tracked. The A4s were just able to outmaneuver them, unfortunately. So, that's all I got for this time. Join me next time for more MiG-21 fighting out over North Vietnam. We're going to keep getting better and better at this aircraft, and and hopefully start getting some missile kills. We'll see. <laughs> okay. See you next time.